lounging around enjoying the hotel waiting to go for another full day heading to Jerusalem by the end of the day and here's our luggage and our bus ready to go and we're getting the luggage all loaded we're first going to Capernaum and then St. Peter's fish oh my goodness is that ever scary I hope she's not the driver today if she is I'm taking a taxi cab so and every day begins with prayer and the personal reflection let nothing be wasted do I value love and care for my friends every God day begins given. with prayer here we go for a new day oh Jesus it was enlarged in the 5th century but what's interesting is that Father Corbo who's a Franciscan archaeologist Father John leads the group into the Alon Museum where we're going to see the ancient boat. But first we see a movie about how it was discovered in the mud and then this is the boat. Maybe Jesus was on this boat, we don't know. But it's great to see antiquities. They don't take it anywhere. They buy, they negotiate. Remember Jesus said that at the end of time that the angels will sort like the fishermen sort. They'll put the good fish here, the big fish, the bad fish they throw. And they have all these different containers and they sort the fish. As soon as they, that, by the way, when we caught the fish, they don't go into containers. They just fling them and they go into the bottom of the boat and they're flopping in the bottom of the boat. By the time we're done fishing, we're up to our shins in flopping fish. So let us not be delayed, okay? Thank you. and the deacon and the servers and we are ready to start mass this is the church built over st peter's house we're going to read john chapter 6 as the gospel reading eat my flesh and drink my blood because jesus spoke those words right over there but this marks this is where peter and andrew lived and peter's mother-in-law and jesus lived right here this is where he lived for three years glass floor to this church so you can see it and right outside the door out the window is the synagogue Right there is the synagogue. And it's from there that Jesus said, eat my flesh and drink my blood. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, there's no life in you. He spoke these words in the synagogue in Capernaum, it says in John's Gospel. And here we are, ready to start Mass. My flesh does not have the technology to pick that up. When it comes to understanding, Wi-Fi signals out my flesh profits nothing. So my senses lie to me about a lot of things around me that I would have to deny are there if I didn't know better by faith or some other way that there are those things out there. Angels, Wi-Fi. So 
Augustine was one time walking along the shore. He was trying to think about the Trinity. And he's going, think, 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 think. Three persons and one God. One, one God, three persons. Think, think, how can this be? And he noticed a little boy on the sand on the shore with a shell. And the little boy is scooping. He scoops a hole from the sand. And he goes to the water, to the ocean. He gets water. And he brings it back. And he puts it in the hole. And he smiles. And he goes back over and gets some more water. And he brings it and puts it in the hole. Augustine watches him do this for a while, filling that little hole with water. And he says, little boy, what are you doing? The boy says, sir. I am going to take all of the water in the ocean and put it in my hole. <laughs> and Augustine says, little boy, look at the ocean. It's vast and infinite. There's no way you can get all of that water into that little hole. And the boy stood up and pointed at Augustine and said, and neither, sir, will you understand all the vast mysteries of God with your little head. <laughs> True story. A friend of mine said to me, I can prove to you that the body, that that which you say is body and blood is not. When you go to your first mass, he said, when you become a Catholic, I want you to go take the Eucharist. And when you're done, I want you to come to my house and vomit it up. He's a scientist, a physicist scientist, but he has a lab in his house with microscopes and all this stuff. He says, when you come over and you vomit up the Eucharist, I'm going to put it in my microscope. And if it shows up as a carbohydrate, then that proves it's still bread. If it shows up as a protein, I'll accept the fact that it has become flesh. So what would you have said? I said, okay, let's do it. But I want to lay the conditions down. I want to know something first. What your microscope can actually detect. Let's do this experiment. We're standing in Capernaum, and I see the little curly-haired Jewish guy with donkey dung between his toes and flies buzzing around his head, and the people are following him. And I said, is that Yeshua? Yes, that's Yeshua. That's Jesus. I say, oh, good, bring your microscope, Jim, quick, set it up. And I go over there, and I go to Jesus, and I take my knife, and I cut the tip of his finger off. And I bring the tip of Jesus' finger with the blood still dripping from it, and I put it in your microscope. Tell me, Jim, would you be able to detect the divinity of Christ with your microscope? And he said, no, my microscope could never detect the divinity of Christ. I could only detect his humanity. And I said, Jim, then what good is your microscope going to do with the Eucharist? You've already said it's severely limited. He said, touche, but I'll be back. <laughs> I don't believe in the body and blood of that it's the body and blood of Christ because it tastes like flesh and tastes like blood. I believe it because Jesus told me that because the church has preached that without question, without hesitation, without any resistance for 1,500 years, all Christians believe that the bread and wine became the body and blood of Christ. I believe it because the space alien came from heaven and told me things I could never know with my own senses. In fact, he told me my own senses were incapable of determining this. I believe it by faith because God said it. I believe it the same way I believe this coin that I held up is not a solid, even though my senses say it is. I know that it's not, and I believe it's not a solid. I believe things because I know they're true, and when Jesus and God tell me something is true, I'm going to believe that even if it defies my sense. So there's a little, I can I mean. bus parked right over there and we just came in to Tanyarine restaurant see the sign up there not too good but and here's where everybody's having their lunch st. Peter's fish there's me st. Peter's fish is a great restaurant Christian family we love coming here and there's our group right there having their lunch Everybody's getting their food. And there they get the whole fish. Eyeballs and all. How you doing, Father? Good. You want to see my whole fish? There it is. No, wait, do
Zechariah offering in the temple when he's announced to him that he's going to have a son. Here's Mary finally arriving after a hundred miles. The Holy Spirit is inspiring Elizabeth and Mary. Here's John the Baptist being prevent, uh, protected, I should say, from the slaughter of the innocents, and it was behind this rock where John was protected. And this is the well, still functioning well, where Mary finally met Elizabeth after that long walk. And here's our group coming in to take their seat and pray the mystery of the visitation. I took everyone up to the upper church. Here's Mary, Queen of Heaven, and all of this magnificent artwork about Mary. And I explained to them Mary is the Ark of the New Covenant, the Queen of Heaven, the Mother of the Church, all from the Bible. We're in the hill country of Judea, and then we went down and we're driving to Jerusalem to head to our hotel at the Notre Dame. Here's, we weren't driving this fast, of course, but it gives you an idea of where we drove on our way to the old city. We've just arrived in the old city of Jerusalem. Right over there is the Church of St. Stephen where he was martyred and originally buried Mount Scopus. Coming over here, there's the top of the Mount of Olives where Jesus ascended into heaven. There's the Dome of the Rock where Abraham offered Isaac and where the Temple of Jerusalem was until the Muslims built that in the 600s. There's the old city walls of Jerusalem right there. Church of St. Xavier, the headquarters of the Franciscans. Oh, there's so much to see. Right over there I can see Gethsemane. And just beyond those trees is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Right there, 10 minutes walk. And guess where we are? We're spending the next five days here at the Notre Dame Center, the most in-demand hotel in Jerusalem. And it's owned by the Vatican, look at that. And it's named for Our Lady and Our Lord. Right there, the Notre Dame. Beautiful church inside here. Everybody's excited and happy. And we're ready for Bethlehem and Jerusalem. I rejoiced when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. We are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. So we all settled in for dinner at the Notre Dame Center. The food here is excellent. Everybody enjoyed it. The ambiance is like being in a palace or a castle. And here we are enjoying our dinner. Everybody has a free evening. Tomorrow we go to Bethlehem. So join us tomorrow all day Bethlehem, including the Passover lamb and dancing for dinner. Good night from Jerusalem.